Uh, the, we've talked several times on the show about the call for the FDA to ban menthol cigarettes. Uh, African-Americans uh, have a high propensity to smoke menthol cigarettes uh, than anyone else. Uh, we have been uh, participants uh, with uh, the effort uh, to get the FDA to do that, but you also, of course, you have uh, Big Tobacco, who is flexing their muscles, uh, and they are uh, also uh, uh, saying, folks are saying that, well, it actually should not happen. Got a couple of people here uh, joining us right now to discuss this here. Uh, first and foremost, Carol Magruder, she's the co-founder and co-chair of the African American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. Uh, we have a retired NYPD Deputy Inspector Corey Pegues, who opposes the ban. Glad to have uh, both of you here. First off, uh, I'll start with you, uh, Corey. Um, I I've heard different folks uh, with no, with different folks with law enforcement suggest this is going to have a negative impact on African Americans criminal prosecution. Uh, I think we, we saw Senator, Senator Tom Cotton talk about how this is going to create an opportunity for the cartels uh, to target black folks. How? Well, all you really have to do is look at 1993, the World Trade bombing. It was funded, you know, on tobacco. You know, that's you, you can just look that up. So what we're talking about, me being a 21-year law enforcement executive, I understand that there will be unintended consequences in the form of this will be the new stop and frisk. Police officers don't know the difference between a menthol cigarette and a non-menthol cigarette, but it will be a precursor for them to engage. And we look at YouTube all over Twitter now. You see what the young people are doing with the police. When we were younger, the police told you to get off the corner, you got off the corner. Now it's engagement, and this engagement can lead to devastating consequences, such as three people that died at the police of, uh, at the hands of police with a menthol cigarette. Sandra Bland refused to put her cigarette out. Her Newport in Dallas, Texas, allegedly hung herself. Eric Garner was allegedly selling Lucy cigarettes, menthol Newport cigarettes. He was choked out by the police. And George Floyd was allegedly buying Newport menthol cigarettes with a counterfeit $50 bill. And we only know about no, those No, no, Corey, 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 this. Corey. Corey, Corey, hold on one second. Corey, Corey, Corey one second. Uh, I, I, first of all, I, I, I deal with facts. And so let, let me unpack those. Out of the three that you're talking about, the only one where there was a direct correlation between so-called loose cigarettes and police interaction was Eric Garner. That was the I only one. Differ. Sandra Bland differ. took place. No, no, Corey, 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 Corey. I'm stating facts. Sandra Bland took place in Prairie View, Texas, with a Texas Department of Public Safety trooper. She was smoking. The officer told her to put the cigarette out. She said then, why? She opposed that. When he then ordered her out of the car, he then said he gave a lawful command, and she was arrested, not because of her cigarette, because she disobeyed the lawful order to get out of the car. The dash cam video after she was arrested showed the officer on the radio with his supervisor trying to determine what she should be charged with. As it relates to George Floyd, again, the, the initial reporting was, had, it was not about him trying to buy cigarettes. What they said was that he was allegedly using a counterfeit money to purchase. So it wasn't like the cops were called because of the cigarettes. It was because allegedly he was trying to use counterfeit money. Those are the facts. I like how you, yeah, I like how you unpack that, but you, you still missing the point that there was a menthol piece to all three of those. Well, you know, kind of a big deal in NYPD, and we talk about Sandra Bland in Texas. But that has that well, cop. That cop had already wrote this. Up. So what I'm saying was, if she never had the menthol cigarette rolling, if she did not have the menthol cigarette, he gives her the summons and she's on her way, right? George Floyd. No, that is I, Corey, Corey. That is wrong. So, listen, Corey, that that is flat out. Corey, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about. I, I really don't because again, I showed that video on this. I, Follow me here, Corey. I showed that video numerous times. I know that video by heart. I've been to Prairie View, Texas. I stopped at the point where she was actually stopped at. 
I've talked to her mother. Sandra Bland, I actually met her. And so what you're talking about, again, a ban on menthol cigarettes has no impact in this here. Carol, uh, 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 please uh, step in here because uh, I want to bring you in here as well. Because again, we're, we're, we're talking about this and, and, I, and I, I'm still trying to, again, figure out uh, the correlation there. Carol Magruder, go ahead. Well, I welcome this conversation because we rarely get to be in the same space with the detractors who are trying to prevent uh, the, us from taking off of the U.S. market the number one killer and targeter of black men and black people, which is the tobacco industry. And so the tobacco industry, they're pulling out all the stops because they feel that our community, that we are their property, and they have had their hooks in our community for so long and killed so many people and that they do not want to let us go. So I want to correct a few things. The first thing is that the FDA is going to take these products off of the market. So there won't be anything to smuggle because they're going to be gone. And that's what they're fighting for. This is not about the individual. It will not be illegal to have a menthol cigarette. It will not be illegal to smoke a menthol cigarette. It will be illegal for Reynolds American tobacco, Newport cigarettes, British American tobacco, it will be illegal for them to distribute these products. That's what the fight is about. And that when President Barack Obama signed the Tobacco Control Act back in 2009, these products were, they were, the FDA was mandated to do something and they did not. And our organization, along with Action on Smoking and Health, the American Association, the National Medical Association, our nation's doctors and black doctors, sued the federal government to make them take this deadly product off the market. And it was only left on because we were a negotiation and it stayed on. They've been taken off in Canada. They've been taken off in the European Union, which is made up of multiple countries. There was no conversation about what black people wanted. Black people live all over the world. There was no conversation about black people want their menthols because those countries have not experienced the racist, pernicious, relentless targeting of our people including giving these products away to children as young as nine years old. And they are, in fact, federally adjudicated racketeers. And I find it so interesting that police officers, retired or otherwise, decide to associate themselves with federally adjudicated, federally adjudicated racketeers. They are the criminals that you should be running from. And that while we're fighting for something, Let's fight for reparations for our people, for health equity reparations. And I'd like to ask our officer here, what does he think about the tar tobacco industry targeting of our people for all these decades of giving these products to children like Dave Chappelle? I'd like to ask you, sir, what do you think of that? Well, what I think about that is I think of Marilyn Monroe. I think of Bill Cosby. Um, I think of uh, John Wayne. All of those white actors and actresses that was posing and selling t tobacco also. So some kind of way black people had came up with this, that the tobacco industry. So let me give a disclaimer. I don't work for the tobacco industry. All right. So these are my personal thoughts. They have stopped targeting. We know it was a cool jazz fest and all that. Like today, you'll never see LeBron James, Steph Curry. They'll never be able to endorse that. The only way they can do you know, advertisement is that point of sale. So we know that. And let me tell you why you said, why does law enforcement want to get involved? Let me tell you why I want to get involved. Because I have black babies, okay? The number one killer from the age of one to 25 in the black community is homicide, okay? And we do know since the crack era, the difference between the crack coke and crack, we know what happened. Now we have an opioid issue. Guess what they're doing with the opioid issue? Counseling, treatment, and education. And I love it because those young, most of the white kids that's, you know, strung out on opioids. So, so Corey, Corey, Corey. And so that's the Corey, I, I got to stop you. Corey, Corey. Rolling. Corey, Corey, I'm still. Please, Corey, please. I'm still trying to understand. No, no, hold on, hold on one second. Corey, I'm still trying to understand because it's, it's not clear. Why are you against a ban on menthol cigarettes? I mean, if, if, if again, this will, be, this will be stopping the production and the distribution. That means they're gone. So are you saying that you're in support of menthol cigarettes? Well, what I'm, support, what I'm in support of is for them to do it equally. Menthol is not even the addiction. 
nicotine is the addiction in cigarettes, and nicotine is in all cigarettes. Menthol, and I, menthol I live makes in New York. I, know, go down I live in New York State. In New York, menthol State, numbs your throat. It actually, numbs, core, it dilates your lungs. Sixty percent of cigarettes sold core, core, in New York already is on the illegal market. It's on the underground. So as police officers, core, 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 core. One we second. We do know that you just core, core. You you. Oh, hello, Corey. You just made a statement about uh, menthol and being addictive. Uh, Carol, go ahead. I, I want to say this. I, I'm in New York right now. I just left the Social Justice Coalition Summit that's put on by Rock Nation, the second one. And so I'm here with my sister colleague, Manu Jones from Detroit, who's getting this handled in Detroit. And our hearts are full because we've had a full day of seeing what Sandra Blonde, what Eric Gardner, what Oscar Grant, what they had in common is that they are black people who live in America. And so leaving the deadliest product on the market that kills 45,000 black people, that's not going to help our community. And I want to ask the police officers who just have the time to protect menthol cigarettes and the tobacco industry, where was their presence today We're at, at, a, at, a, at a conference that's talking about solutions, that's talking about all of the people who are wrongfully conv convicted in this country. That's, the, that's, the, that's what needs to happen. And that's where our officers who know where the bodies are buried, because I, you know, they'll tell you that, well, I know because I'm an officer. I challenge you, sir, go back and clean up your departments. Go up and really participate in true police reform in this country. Let's get to the surface of the root of this, because Amadou Jalla was standing on his stoop and he was shot 44 times. Oscar Grant got off a BART train in Oakland, California, and he was shot uh, in the back. So these uh, that, things are that, real. I mean, I, 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 I one, 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 one second. I, 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 I get that part in terms of police accountability. But, but, but Corey, I, I'm still trying to understand. This is what I'm confused by. If the FDA bans menthol cigarettes, which were targeting black people, the numbers show the percentage of black people smoking menthols and the percentage of black people who have been impacted and dying as a result are extremely high. What I'm trying to, so what are you, are you saying, Corey, ban all cigarettes? Or are you, or are you saying you don't like them? Okay, but here's my whole point. If you start with menthol, you can move to the next. So, so are you saying that by banning menthol somehow, that's negative on black people. Like, I'm, really, I'm literally confused with your argument. Exactly okay. what is so, it? So the, so the argument is this, Roland. Why ban something for one segment of the community? When you talk about 45,000 people die a year of uh, black people from menthol, no one gives the numbers of the white people dying from, from non-menthol cigarettes. So if you're going to do it, when we look at smoking sensation over the last 30 years, it Corey, has down hey, Corey, hey, Corey, I give a damn about black people. Hey, Corey, you know who I care about? Black people. Do you know okay, what I well, care about? So black I'm, people? Well, as a law I care about black as well. A law enforcement, I give a, a damn about my people, too. As a law enforcement executive, I care about all people. So let's end. I care about black, all people, so, oh, but I'm going to start with the mine. Bone. So I'm going to start with mine. Is, I don't want, I'm gonna start I don't with want mine. no unintended. I don't want no unintended consequences. I What's know police and well. And, and what I are the unintended the police, consequences? The Corey, unintended Corey. consequences what are, is going what to are be the more engagement rolling. It will be more engagement with the black and brown community with young people over smoking these cigarettes. But the illicit market Corey, in the Corey, underground, Corey, 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 all you got to do is look Corey, at hold Chicago. Up, Corey, 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 hold up, Corey. Hold on, let me get this out. Corey, Corey, one second. It's so bad. No, 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 Corey, I, I, Corey, I need to establish facts. Corey, I need to establish facts. Are you saying, and I'm trying to understand, is it your belief that a ban on menthol cigar cigarettes means that they are illegal? When you ban them, that's when the underground is going to explode. But the underground is already exploding. And we talk about a health issue, and I'm on record talking and saying that cigarette, I, I don't smoke. Smoking is bad for your health. I know that. The ban is about the, the manufacturers. It is about Reynolds American. 
and Reynolds it's not American. Not about Reynolds American. So what? Uh, listen, it, ma'am, listen to what about, I'm saying. Not, I'm no, just sir, giving you. It's not about the individual. You, it is I'm not. I'm giving you. you that and I'm you don't giving know what you. I'm only about. giving you a law enforcement perspective. I can Go only give you a law enforcement. enforcement That's my point. Where Go I know, where I know so, that so, the criminal element will hold make one a second, ton one of money, and we will have more shootings in our community. The gangs will start selling all of these un, um, unauthorized cigarettes, like you said. They won't I know be there the to ban sell. is for the manufacturer, right? The sell. ban is for the uh, manufacturer. Hold on, Corey, 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 Corey. Hold on one second, Corey. Corey, I got to ask you a question. You say they're going to be selling unauthorized cigarettes. How are they selling unauthorized cigarettes when they're not going to be allowed to be manufactured or distributed? They're coming in by the bus loads. They're coming in by ships now, China and India. The U.S. government is grabbing these. They're grabbing millions of cartons of cigarettes. They're going to be making them rolling. And if we think, and my main issue is we think we have a health problem now with a regulated cigarette for over 80-something years, Imagine when they ban the cigarettes. Everybody's going to be making cigarettes. They're going to have fentanyl and everything I, in the I, cigarettes. It's just like alcohol. Oh, wow. Really. It's just like prohibition. Oh, wow. Prohibition didn't work. Wow. They all went and started making illegal moonshine, right? It's going to be I, the same I, thing with the okay, cigarettes. Right. We already seen this movie before. Don't be bamboozled by saying... 45,000 Don't be black bamboozled people died by an industry that doesn't want I'm to let go you, of the uh, well, one, second, one second, one second, Corey, Carol. Well, one, one second, Corey, Carol. Uh, Carol, let me ask you this question. Uh, when Big Tobacco was sued and states were winning and we begin to see a curtailing of advertising and things along those lines, did we not see a dramatic drop uh, of smoking we, rates in this country? We have seen a dramatic drop, but there has always been a disparity. And so there was no bigger demonstration of the disparities when we had COVID. That you, it, it just magnified the disparities. And so our position, along with Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, 100 Black Men, uh, Make It Count, the NMA, Health Black Center for Health Equity, all of these groups have studied this issue and we all agree that these products need to come off the market. Now, to my to my officer's point, the, the, the policy is one piece, but there needs to be cessation. There needs to be health equity. There needs to be reparations from the tobacco industry to our community. And so this brother, he wants to defend Marilyn Monroe and John Wayne, God bless him. I'm concerned about my brother on the corner who has been, who, are, who in our community has been seeded with addiction for decades and decades. And I'd, I'd like you to ask your question. Do you, do you, you feel that the tobacco how do you industry? Deal with do you feel that the tobacco how do you industry deal? And I owes us reparations? Don't put words in my mouth. I never defended John Wayne and Marilyn Monroe, but you guys keep saying they targeted the black community. They targeted they all. They targeted tobacco. Tobacco they wasn't going to get rich just in the black community. They everybody was smoking cigarettes. And everybody, and Bing Crosby, Ashley Corey, they all Ashley Corey, Corey. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second. One second, one second. Corey, again, I deal with facts. It is established that the tobacco industry specifically target African Americans, sponsoring not just jazz festivals, sponsoring tables, sponsoring events. They literally had psychologists studying African Americans to figure out how to increase the sales. So what you're saying is wrong because there literally is empirical data to show that. Now, final point from both of you, and I'm still trying to go back to this basic point, Corey. You keep suggesting that if you ban menthol cigarettes, all of a sudden we're going to see a dramatic increase of killing of black people in the country. Well, if you I don't that, ban I menthol said there's cigarettes, going to Corey, be there's going to be an increase engagement in the black and brown community with the police. I know that for a fact because they're going to drug um, cigarettes, illegal cigarettes will be the new drug. So they'll be selling cigarettes. If you could get a carton of cigarettes and you could make $700 and you only paid $100 for the cigarettes, why would you sell cocaine and crack heroin um, opioids? I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. The mafia is going to get involved. 
all of the drug games, all of these low level blood scripts near this MS 13s. I know that's going to happen because they're going to be on the corners in our low social economic neighborhoods selling illegal cigarettes. And listen, the only thing I can say is I, but I hope that they don't ban it. And I, but I really hope and pray if they do ban it, that we don't see this increased um, engagement in the black and brown community. But you could look at like in Delaware, there's been three cases of people, um, the police choking people for not smoking on the uh, the boardwalk. We got a 12 year old kid in LA that was stopped. They thought he was smoking a marijuana. He was smoking a Swisher cigarette. So there's pockets of these crimes, already, these engagements already. They're only going to magnify if you have this ban. But again, I Got appreciate, it. I appreciate- Carol, it. Carol, final Thank comment. You. Carol, final, no, one second, one second. Final, Carol, final comment. My final comment is that this is the beginning of a process. So we're still fighting for our, our, our right to vote and that there are African-Americans who are leading this charge to get the tobacco industry out of our community. And that is combined with many of the things that people are talking about with cessation, with dealing with structural racism, with criminal reform, which is why I'm in New York today. And I encourage all the police officers who like to hang out with the federally adjudicated racketeers under RICO, all of these tobacco companies are racketeer influenced corrupt organizations. The, the mafia is already doing it, except they're white men with suits on who belong to country clubs. And so they get, to, they get a free pass. So people not to be afraid to know that our communities can be healthy, that we will no longer continue to support the, the biggest wolf, the biggest targeter coming in and seeding the seeds of addiction in our community generation after generation after generation. The day is over for that. And it's time for people to get on the right side of this issue to demand that our government support our people and that we get reparations from the tobacco industry for the million black people who have died in the past 20 years from tobacco induced diseases. We need reparations. So let's get with that. Let's get with that. All right. The brother won't have to sell uh, uh, cigarettes on the corner if he gets reparations. I, I got you. We are out of time. I appreciate both of you uh, joining us on today's show. Thank you so very much. We come back. Um, I'm going to chat with my panel. All right, folks, welcome back to Roller Mart Unfiltered. Let me bring in Kelly and Michael. Uh, Kelly, first off, uh, what do you make of uh, the comments that Corey was making there that by banning menthol cigarettes, somehow that's going to lead to this dramatic increase uh, uh, with law enforcement? I think he was trying to make a point that is valid, but he was going about it the wrong way by pulling... Um, Pulling, you know, grasping at straws for a solid argument. But I do understand the notion of when something is all of a sudden illegal across the board, and it is known that mostly Black people have been um, partaking in that, then it is, you know, it is a pattern for police to target Black people and to, you know, use their bias against Black people to, you know, meet quotas, to you know, up arrests, et cetera, et cetera. So I understand his concern, be that as it may, that doesn't mean that the cigarettes should be um, on the market because they are deadly and there is no benefit to them being on market. So, you know, should they get off market? I, I agree with that, but I also understand his concern about an increase in harassment to, towards black people who, once upon a time, should this become illegal, at one point was doing something legal. I do understand his point in that regard. I just feel like he went about it the wrong way Got it. in your conversation. Michael. Yeah, Roland. Uh, so I've been following this for a couple of years, but that conversation there with the uh, police officer was very, very confusing. I was, I was following along, also trying to understand his logic here. Um, we know that um, eighty percent of African Americans who smoke smoke menthol cigarettes. Now, from my understanding and researching this for like the past year or so, um, it would, this would ban the manufacturing of menthol cigarettes here in the U.S., but. I haven't found anything saying it would ban the actual sale of menthol cigarettes. Um, and then I haven't seen anything saying it would ban possession of menthol cigarettes, say an individual having menthol cigarettes. So I'm trying to follow the logic. 
And I think you had this that sister on the show previously a few months ago, something mm-hmm. like that, because I remember mm-hmm. us having this conversation. I think maybe yep. someone was sitting in for you. I'm still trying to follow the logic. How do we go from a ban on menthol cigarettes to uh, it increasing the overall engagement and deaths of African-Americans at the hands of police officers? Because I haven't seen anything saying possessing menthol cigarettes will be illegal. I'm still trying to find the evidence of all of that. And that was precisely my point. And so that's why I was just sitting here and then trying to bring up Sandra Bland by saying, well, if she didn't have a cigarette, she <laughs> yeah, that was a reach. ticket, she would. I, it was, <laughs> that, was that was that was that was a big ass reach. So it was like <laughs> a, a whole lot of that going. And I was just like, I'm confused, you know, and, 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 and let's just be real clear what you do have here. You got big tobacco. They're doing all they can. They do not want to see menthol cigarettes banned. Why? Because they're making right. billions. Mm-hmm. They're making billions. And you know what's happening? We know for a fact African Americans uh, and, and how they, how they are they are used to target African Americans. And I, look, I I, I I got no problem to say, let's say you know look we're with the coalition tobacco free kids. We understand what's going. On. I can't. I despise cigarette smoke. And the bottom line is this here: it's killing our people. It's yes. killing our people. Right. And if we want yeah. if we want to say black lives matter, well then we damn sure they'll be talking about it when it comes to those who are dying as a result of cigarettes. So I am flat out in support of the FDA banning menthol cigarettes. Hotep, everybody. This is Michael M. Hotep from the African History Network. Our Black Empowerment Friday weekend sale is on right now. We have a fantastic promotion for you. Get our bundle pack of two online history courses that I teach, as well as my 15 lecture downloadable bundle, African History Awakens the African Mind from Mental Death. These are both from me, Michael M. Hotep. They're on sale right now for only $100. That's 76% off. My first online history class is Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Kemet is one of the original names for Egypt. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles. There's about 100 articles that we cover in the class. Over 200 slides that I put together as well. The, and there are also video clips, including excerpts of interviews I've done with some of our historians and scholars, as well as Renoka Rashidi, Professor James Small, Anthony Browder, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamane, and Dr. David M. Hotel. In the second class that I teach, it's called Black Resistance Movements from the Haitian Revolution, the U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement, and Black Power Movement, 1800 to 1968. And we dig in deep and look at history chronologically from 1800 to 1968 and look at what leads to the Civil War taking place. We study the Jim Crow era, the Reconstruction era, 1865 to 1877, World War I, World War II, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement, and the Great Migration, 1915 to 1970 to understand what happened to us after slavery ended what were the laws and policies put in place to put us where we are today to understand where we need to go from here i created both of these classes created the curriculum chose the content as well this sale has been extended to sunday december 3rd 2023 visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com you'll see the promotion at the top of the page As soon as you register, you can start watching the content. You can join us for our next online class live Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch all of these classes on demand. And even after the course is over with, you don't lose access. Register right now. Order right now. Visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com this sale has been extended to sunday december 3rd 2023 uh, also if you'd like to stop it for information you can support the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal paypal.me 
forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever, and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.